Welcome back to the news. I had no idea you were going to hit me with that. Uh, but I'm ready for it. Are you? I accept your challenge. Okay, good. Of being the newsman today. Happy holidays to everybody, uh, whatever you did. I don't know what you did. You might have got covered in snow if you were in the right neighborhood or the wrong neighborhood, depending. Uh-huh. I, you know, we got, we got some of it, uh, but I, they didn't like get in my way of food or anything like that. I still was able to. You got your food. Then. I was able. Good. I still found food uh-huh. at the uh, with family. Uh huh. Uh, and I ate too, too much of it, which is really the main thing about any holiday and any celebration, as mm-hmm. far as I can tell. Yeah, no no presents, just food. And you survived Burlington, which I'm happy about. It was a good time, yeah. And you also hit the internet with all types of personal information regarding your car videos and your relationships and everything else. So oh boy. I'm glad we got that out of the way yeah. also. If you guys haven't seen it, you can go check out Will's tour and bizarre comparison of the Tesla Model 3 and the Ford Bronco, which is yeah. a hot clip as far as clips go. Uh, but we have other things to talk about today, and we are going to hit you with the information as quickly as possible. Apple reportedly seriously concerned about iPhone 14 Plus sales, looking to reevaluate iPhone 15 lineup. Too many iPhones, Will. Mm-hmm. It's, it might be too many iPhones. I don't know. Or it's just uh, uh, some sort of macroeconomic thing where uh, you have fewer people that are in the middle range and it's people who want to just buy the most premium one or people who just want the cheapest one. (laughs) And you're having that disparity. That could be a possibility as well. They tried with the mini one to create something else that would go in the middle. Mm -hmm. And we all know what happened with the mini one. Mm -hmm. That thing vanished. And so then they were like, okay, well, maybe people just want the regular model, but the plus size, which is what they did in this case, Apple's reportedly seriously con- concerned over the sales performance of the iPhone 14 Plus, the 6.7 inch non pro variant of the 14 lineup. As a result, it is considering ways to re strategize its iPhone lineup for next year. iPhone 14 Plus is the newest addition to the lineup after it took over for the mini, which was the 5.4 inch version. Some people still lamenting the demise of the mini model, sitting there saying, well, that was cute. Yeah. You know what wasn't cute, Will? The sales. Those weren't cute at all. Tim went in the boardroom. He said, why don't they want the mini? Why don't they want the plus? What are we doing wrong? Yeah. And this this gets into this situation where uh, you have this fine line of differentiation where you have this pro model and you can't really make it so much better than the non-pro model. Otherwise, everyone just buys the pro model and you just try to figure out this balancing act of your customer base. Or you say, screw it, and you uh, simplify the product offering in order so that you can better you can better predict demand and that you're not manufacturing phones that people don't want and then r- changing around assembly lines. And that stuff can be expensive if you can't properly predict demand for a variety of models. Or just an older design, like the iPhone SE. People well, you like can, it. yeah, you can, you can, uh, in the budget range, you can do that. Yeah. But this plus model was uh, not budget at all. You were still close to a grand or whatever it was for mm-hmm. it. For that floating island. I don't thing. know. Like, let, let me ask you, uh, you know, which model would you go for? If you were going to be on an iPhone at this moment, which model would you go for and why? I go for the 14 Pro. 14 just, Pro? Yeah. Which is the one I was using as well. It's the one I've been using the most recently. And it's not enough of a price gap for me to think about the other versions. Mm -hmm. And I just thought Apple was cool with selling everybody a pro model. I know demand for the pro models was through the roof. But if they're concerned and reevaluating, then, you know, maybe we're not going to see as many non-pro variants in the future. It's possible. We'll see. Probably the audience agrees. Which one would you guys go for? Apple faces a class action lawsuit alleging racial bias in the watch's blood oximeter. I read about this actually a while ago. I didn't know it was going to turn into a court case, but everything turns into a court case. When you're one of the biggest brands in the world, you're, you know, there's money that you can listen. There's a lot of suing. Listen, why do you think they employ so many lawyers? We've learned about it firsthand, haven't we? Yeah. New York man has filed a class action lawsuit against Apple on December 24th, alleging that the Apple, he does on Christmas Eve as well. He's like, how you like that, Tim? 
Uh-huh. Alleging that the Apple Watch's blood oximeter has a racial bias against individuals with darker skin tones. The blood oxygen app is available on Apple Watch Series 6 and newer and can measure the oxygen level of your blood on demand. I've heard this in the past that the lighter tones, it's easier to read through it. New York resident Alex Morales alleges that he purchased an Apple Watch between 2020 and 2021 and was aware that the watch purported to measure blood oxygen levels and he believed it did without regard to skin tone. According to the lawsuit, which was filed in the Southern District of New York, it alleges that that's not the case. However, oh, they also say that they've confirmed confirmed the clinical significance of racial bias of pulse oximetry. Well, I don't know. What can you do? Leave the technology out? Can you can you tweak it? Do we get to a point where uh, the technology has to have come with a disclaimer, mm. or is it a thing where you could have a setting? Mm-hmm. inside of the watch that it could possibly be improved. For decades, there have been reports that such devices were significantly less accurate in measuring blood oxygen levels based on skin color, the lawsuit reads. Or, you know, is this one of those ones going to get settled outside of court? Is there going to be mm-hmm. an exchange for the damages and such class action? I wonder how many people jump onto it. And obviously there's plenty of people out there with darker skin tones that have Apple Watches. And I'm curious, Mm -hmm. is it widespread? And to what extent is there a lack of accuracy uh, when it comes down to that? Who's going to do the test? I guess uh, someone will. Well, I'm sure it's already out there. I mean, I bet you there's entire uh, Reddit threads you can dive into here Mm. that are going to talk about a lack of effectiveness or accuracy with these things, I find from device to device. You know what I find as well? If I wear it on the top, I feel like my arm hair is getting in the way. Yeah, it's definitely darker there. Can I hit them for that as well? Yeah. No, I don't know if it's the, the color or if it's just disturbing the thing. I haven't gotten to the point of shaving the arm, but there's all kinds <laughs> of ways in which... You know, to shave your arm to for your. I don't know. Listen, I don't. I don't know. I don't know about all this. You understand? But they do. Apple writes a disclaimer here. Oh, they do. Blood oxygen app measurements are not intended for medical use, including self-diagnosis or consultation with the doctor. Well, they say that, but they don't call out. They don't say anything about skin tones. Yeah. Let me know in the comments if you guys have any experience with trying to get this oximeter to work, and, and you have a darker skin tone. I'm curious about it. Could be a big deal. Could turn into a huge thing. I mean. Anything with Apple can get can turn big because there's just so many devices out there. Where, sure. So uh, class action opportunities through the roof. Mm-hmm. India makes USB Type C charging mandatory for device makers from March of 2025. Well, this is similar to what happened in Europe, happening now in India. Obviously, this mostly only affects Apple because they're the the last one standing as far as something other than USB Type C goes. Everybody's on on C at this point. Or, Sounds like a drug. Are you, are you on C? Yeah. Well, Hell I'm on, yeah, I'm on C. Vitamin C. Yeah. <laughs> vitamin C in the winter. Might get some of that going. Uh, the common charger directive will kick in three months after the EU for smartphones. Oh, so there you go. They are following the EU. It's three months after. Uh, laptop makers have a little longer to comply up to 2026. I mean, I've been having this experience personally because I'm using the new version of the MacBook Pros. I have the 14 inch that I use at home and it has the MagSafe. They brought the MagSafe back and I'm like, okay, at first I was, I was thinking, that's so great that it's back because it's such a convenient connector. Mm-hmm. However, in my house, there's a lot of other gadgets and things. There's many people that live there. You just go back to type C. And you can charge off type C with it because on a laptop you can have both. Mm. And there are some advantages to a MagSafe, but one of one of those advantages is not the fact that these MagSafe connectors are lying around everywhere, because they're not. Mm-hmm. And Type-C actually is on the laptop side, and the same thing goes for smartphones. If it wasn't for Apple, I could ha- we could get away with far fewer chargers in the house, Sure, but there are Apple devices there, and so lightning cables are hanging around for a little bit longer. Now, Apple obviously not huge fans of this uh, directive they i mean we don't really know what they're gonna do if it's actually gonna be type c people there were rumors at one point of the portless iphone who knows if that's actually uh, a a true possibility Mm -hmm. i would think you have these pro devices they're shooting pro res uh, they're shooting 4k they're shooting 60 frames you have some in some cases some enormous files you got to believe there's still some advantages to being able to plug in Mm -hmm. and I still want to have that capability, and 
all their other products embrace type C, like the iPad and the laptop and so forth. So uh, anyway, 2025 gives them enough time, I guess, to figure it out. What are we in now? Well, it's almost 2023 right here. Oh, yeah. Um, there's global supply chain at play when it comes to chargers. Therefore, we have to align ourselves with the global timeline. Uh, this is what's coming from the Secretary, Ministry of Consumer Affairs in India. So that's why they kind of tagged along, I guess, with the European Union. The important thing to note, in India, you still have prevalence of uh, micro USB chargers as well. Oh, right. Yeah. On more budget-oriented devices. So that will quickly get rid of those. Although by 2025, I would assume those would kind of be gone as sure. well uh kia gives us a closer look at the ev9 the first its first electric suv Ooh, look at these wheels these are quite your style will these are quite your style are they not they're uh they're something yeah i like the look of the front as uh, well uh, it's all very arrow but while still being boxy enough to immediately appear like an suv and you know the advantage with the boxy suv is not just about the rugged looks. It's also about carrying capacity when it comes to cargo. Mm -hmm. Curves and things make it hard for boxes and things to go into your cargo carrier, which mm. in this case is an SUV. You are the owner of a boxy SUV. You put all kinds of things in it, do you not, Will? And it's really satisfying that a box just fits right in because it's just like right angles. Square goes into sense. square. Yeah. It's a lovely occurrence when it takes place. And so this SUV is one of the first that looks like an SUV. Obviously, the Rivian sort of does as well. However, we have some others that are uh, certainly more... Cur I like the look of this thing. I don't mind it That's one nice bit. Profile. Yeah, I'll take the profile. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be a uh, crazy fast SUV. Zero to 105 seconds. It should be fine for most people. Vehicle like this. Interior, you see you got the steering yoke as well spaceship like materials going on mm -hmm. the the wide display and my goodness hasn't kia and hyundai haven't they taken this electric thing very seriously yeah they are rolling out models left right and center it's like you with your sketchbook will just going after it going mm -hmm. at it mm -hmm. you've got 17 new models over here and they're gonna have lots of range as well in there i think it said like 500 kilometers is that right 540 kilometer range which is 336 miles on a full charge uh the flagship ev9 suv expected to play an integral role as the automaker strives for 1.2 million ev sales by 2030 that color is very reminiscent of rivian as well i wonder mm. if there is a little bit of inspiration now looking just at the shape just at the shape, never mind the Kia versus Rivian, this and that. It looks like there's a lot of space. Do you take this or the Rivian SUV? Hmm. Just, just n never mind the brands and never the mind the smarts. Just, stuff. just design. Just you as an artist, the creative part of you, the, which is more appealing the lines, to you? Which um, is more appealing? I actually prefer this one. Mm. I like the boxy shape of SUVs. But the Rivian, can you just quickly pull up a comparison of the Rivian SUV? Because it's not far from it. I mean, you're going to see it in a similar blue color, maybe. Or they got it in green. Go ahead. Now you can answer. Now that you've quickly mm. referenced both. Just looking oh, at geez. the shape of I the thing. I do like the green, though. Just yeah, looking at the design here. This one's pretty boxy still. It's... Uh, not quite Bronco, but it's almost there, is it not? Um, you know what? I think I might take the Rivian. <laughs> He's taking they're, the Rivian, ladies and close. gentlemen. Yeah, they're they're cool. I, and this I, paints, a, paints a picture really well. I don't Come want the boxy SUV to go away. It's just too awesome to put things in. I hope they can figure out batteries and range and everything else to go with it. But the EV9, it looks, looks promising. Shout out Kia for quickly pumping out electric vehicles mm -hmm. and now the question becomes will tesla do the same will they have their very own cyber truck suv we talk a lot you and i personally on and off the show about the model x not really filling the suv void mm -hmm. uh for tesla that we would want and it's a personal preference but the the model x it just seems like a um a blown up model s or mm -hmm. three or y or whatever they just can, it's like a bubble that you just keep blowing more air into as you go up in the different in the range of tesla models 
Obviously, the gullwing doors are pretty cool. Uh, controversial, though. Uh, but uh-huh. it, listen, this is there's a lot of SUVs in the market that sort of look like big cars. Mm-hmm. But if if I had to tell you about my personal preference, I'm more to towards the boxy side or the rugged looks when it comes to the SUV as opposed to the to the car. Uh, now, Tesla went for the first time completely into some wild new uh, space with the Cybertruck of just, well, let's start from scratch. Let's throw out what we have as mm-hmm. far as ID is concerned and fitting it into the lineup. It's something completely new. Mm-hmm. And so now you would be sitting there thinking, well, why not do the SUV version? And that's what's being shown off here in this think piece piece to get you thinking as tesla prepares to bring cybertruck electric pickup to production we explore the potential of the automaker to bring a cybertruck suv with a third row and up to nine seats mm. this is more along the lines of what we just brought up rivian of what they're doing right they say okay you have the truck you have the suv hummer with the the electric hummer hummer ev similar thing yeah with the suv and the truck they look very similar and then all you do is instead of having a bed you just finish off the back and you get one more row. That's what they'll be doing with the EV SUV. Uh, so yeah, that would make sense to me. If you've already got the Cybertruck sitting there, put a lid on the back. That's all you have to do, right? It doesn't look as cool. You're missing that that nice slope on the back. Yeah, you're right. It reminds me of just like a land or moon rover yeah. or something. This kind of completes the look. Hmm. It's a, uh, listen... I mean, you have a rendering here. It's it wouldn't be a finished product. I don't know. Maybe they could change that line a little bit, but there there's obviously a huge demand for SUVs, massive appetite for SUVs. So I wouldn't be surprised if something like that happened at some point. But currently, I can't see it being a huge party because their multi seater is the Model X. Unless they were going to get rid of the Model X and and everything in SUV land goes like this. But I think the SUV customer is a little different. However, this is all crazy because we never even expected the Cybertruck to be a real thing. I mean, uh-huh. you remember back to that launch, how shocking that shape was, mm-hmm. how striking that shape was. We were like, is this real? What are these polygons? What's yeah. happening here? And it's going to feel the same way when that thing comes in real life. Uh, so if they're willing to do that, then then yeah, chuck the SUV in there as well. And uh, whip some stuff at the what? That is a crazy event. That Cybertruck event. Look at the visual. <laughs> oh my god! Do you remember this event, Will? Well, yeah, the breaking of the glass it's, as well. The Cyber Quad. It's an entire meme. This event is an entire meme. Everyone had the leather jackets on, and it was around the time of cyberpunk hype. Yeah. It was a, just a real moment in time, wasn't he? Came with a sledgehammer, wham. Huge smile on his face, yeah. steel panels, warthog looks. It was a fun time. Mm-hmm. No doubt about it. Uh, California law tries to force Tesla to rename FSD. Mm-hmm. This naming thing. You might be happy with this. This naming right? thing. Well, we've talked about this naming thing in the past. M- more around autopilot. How I actually just, every time someone's asking me what's going on with the Tesla and the Self-driving stuff, this is, always throws people off. I'm talking about the general public. When you talk about FSD beta or well, just FSD now, I guess it's, well, I don't know, is it still beta? Anyway, autopilot was just felt so much better in the mouth. Yeah. Tesla autopilot. Uh, no, I don't know if they were, they obviously, I don't know if they were trying to get away, but they still call it autopilot, don't they? They do, yeah. There's so, different levels of autopilot as well. Because you can pay for a service for autopilot. It just seems like you're not hearing people say autopilot anymore. People seem to refer to what we're doing now, certainly those of us that have opted into it as, as FSD. Yeah. At that level. But you see, your car, you don't have self driving, right? So, do you have what version of autopilot do you have? I have the most basic of autopilots, but then there's a, another autopilot, the step up, the upgraded version where you have to pay. Hmm. So what does your version of autopilot do if you don't pay them any extra? It it comes with the car. No, no, but what does it do? Um, What are the capabilities? It has cruise control. Adaptive. Adaptive. Okay. Um, Yeah, that's pretty much it. It stays in your lane. There's no lane changing. There's no auto summon, that kind of stuff. Hmm. Still useful. Yeah. 
Yeah. So anyway, there's there's levels to it. When we get to FSD, that's like intersections, left hand turns. That's where the magic happens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is at FSD. However, I understand why there'd be apprehension around those terms. You're still monitoring the vehicle. It's not a hundred percent perfect, but it is magic. I'm just gonna go out there and say it. it's magic, dude. Mm -hmm. Like it. This is as a person who's used it, um, put some miles on it and just did some road trips with it. To me, it's, I have a ton of appreciation for it. I'm not, you know, whatever. Call me a fanboy. I'm not even, I'm not, I'm definitely not a fanboy. Like, I, I was incredibly skeptical and reluctant. But for me, it, it's magic. However, and should it's it- It's only going to get better. But should it be called full self-driving is the issue. I don't believe so. And but. so obviously it's what legislators and lawyers are talking about and- Listen, when you when you enable the full self driving, you accept the terms. It uh, there's a huge disclaimer in there of everything you're accepting and everything it can and can't do, and how you have to monitor it, sure. and it's constantly asking you to prove you're alive and awake. So even though it's called full self driving, there's tons of checks and balances in there that that implies mm -hmm. implies to you otherwise. It's full self driving plus plus mm. star star asterisk mm. whatever i don't know if it'll end up being called that in the long run uh it's an ambitious name obviously um yeah you looking for something specifically no 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 oh. i just think uh yeah it shouldn't be called that um but what should it be called then if that's the case well autopilot was totally fun and cool, but I guess that means something else inside of Tesla right now. Like you're saying, you have a version of autopilot. Autopilot refers to any amount of autonomy at the moment. Yeah. I, do you need the full in there? Can it just be called SD, self-driving? It, it's uh, definitely doing elements of self-driving. Yeah. SSD, sort of self-driving. Sort of. Uh, AF, I, AFSD, almost full self-driving. And you don't want to add the beta in there. Full self-driving sort of? beta to a certain level, right? Full self-driving capability. I, I mean, it is, it does full, it does fully self-drive. It does fully self-drive. You just, it's just not 100% perfect. I don't know. <laughs> like, would you say a human has full self-driving capability? No. 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 They, I mean, they can, they drive, but they also make tons of mistakes. I don't know. We'll see what it ends up being called long term. But you know how, you know how Elon feels about California anyway, Well, Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Tesla appears to be turning back to radar for its vehicles. Tesla plans to add a new radar product to its vehicles mid-January, according to documents posted with the Federal Communications Commission. The disclosure, which was first reported by Electric, comes as the company faces scrutiny over the safety and capabilities of its standard, uh, standard advanced driver assistance system known as Autopilot and the $15,000 optional upgraded product branded as full self-driving. Mm. FSD beta software offers automated driving features. Well, they could just call it automated driving features. They could call it ADF. Okay, Auto yeah. Automated driving features. All right. Yeah. Do you want to unlock automated driving features? It's way less exciting, but uh, currently they have claimed that they can achieve full autonomy through a vision only approach cameras, essentially. Mm -hmm. So you have other sensors like LiDAR, radar that other companies actually have enabled as well. Uh huh. Uh, in favor of cameras and a deep neural network that quickly processes the vehicle's. Surroundings and response in real time. CEO Elon Musk previously promised to solve full self-driving by the end of this year. And I don't know, are, the, is, is it, are they running into roadblocks with vision-only based self-driving? The company began removing radar from its vehicles last May. Uh, in October, Tesla removed its 12 ultrasonic sensors. This is the thing that you won't shut up about. You're yeah. so angry about these ultrasonic sensors. Uh-huh, yeah. Because in your video, it's like probably one of the first things you cover yeah. right, on the Model 3. You're the like, exterior. look at this. You're like, look at the front bumper. I have no all, I have no sensors. Mm -hmm. Because they actually took out features, um, the parking assistant um, yeah. out of it, like my, my Tesla. I mean, they're constantly taking the minimalist approach 
Like, do we need that? Nah, get rid of it. Mm-hmm. Like, that mm-hmm. seems to be the thing that they do. Can we do it with vision? Can we do it with cameras? Okay, let's do that. But I do like that idea that there's less components and it just focuses more on like specific components that are really good at doing one. That'd be great. But right now your life is easier with the sensors. Yeah. Because totally, I know because I have totally. them. Yeah. Uh, now it appears radar is back. It's not yet clear which models will get the new radar. The type of radar Tesla intends to market next year is a, of a frequency that's allocated by the FCC for ADAS use cases. Okay, so this is super early, this application. And, <clears throat> and people are un- uncertain of where and how it could be applied. But obviously there's an interest there in possibly implementing radar once again mm-hmm. and not being strictly vision based. And maybe there's some advantages to that. I don't know what. Conditions? I've been thinking about that a lot with these nasty conditions outside. The with cameras get muddy. The weather, dirty. the way it's going right now. Yeah. I don't know. It's just a thought that I had. But uh, either way, I guess if it listen, if it makes them better and more effective and more capable, then get the sensors back. Whatever. Mm-hmm. All right, last one. Avatar: The Way of the Water makes more money in its first ten days than the original film, suggesting that the sequel has staying power. I was curious about this because I had read that some other movie had knocked it out of the top spot. Which one? I don't know. I don't remember what it was. But I was like, hey, that seems too soon to knock it out of the top spot. They spent a billion dollars on this thing. And Mo did mention that there wasn't a lot of advertising, like, after the fact. Yeah. Listen, I don't know, man. Uh, I'm hearing about it. My kids are talking about it. Oh, yeah? Really? I I don't know. I, I think people know about it. Okay. Um, I'm just living in a bubble. But the other thing is too with these with these type of films, it seems that people are gonna watch them for a while. It's like it's a little bit of a long tail to it. Have sure, you, have you yeah. seen Avatar yet? No, I'll I'll watch it. It's, you know, I'll... yeah. There's like a timeless feel to it. And I'm sure it'll be in theaters for a long time. They'll mm-hmm. make sure you have a chance to see it. Oh well, yeah. Uh, but you haven't seen it yet. I have not. Uh, uh, well, I, I'm excited for it actually. Mo's been talking like a big game about it. Yeah, so. Mo won't shut up about it, will he? It's like the graphics. Mr. Avatar. The water. There. Too bad we didn't have his input on this uh, yeah. on this topic here. So it took in more at the box office, but this often happens with sequels because people already know the brand mm-hmm. and they've been waiting for it. And in this case, they've been waiting a long time. $253 million at the box office suggests that the film will m- maintain momentum into the new year. So it's like spread out from opening weekend until now people are still going to see it they're taking their time but they're mm-hmm. there's still pent up demand for it and avatar the way of the water remained at the top of the box office after its second weekend in theater okay maybe i read i don't know maybe i read some garbage it's possible yeah james cameron's film has now taken 253 million in the united states in his first 10 days release despite missing studio expectations on its opening weekend oh so they did have even bigger expectations unbelievable okay uh, uh, the previous one did 2.9 billies, which gives whew, you got to make up some serious. You still got to do some money to get there. Will mm. these are giant enterprises? These type of things. It's just yeah. staggering. And we're paying them. It's just, but it's just staggering <laughs> to imagine what you've got to do to be considered success. You can do many hundreds of millions and be a failure when the expectations are as high as Avatar. Yet, if the expectations are lower, you're not James Cameron. You're just making a movie. And you make hundreds of millions of dollars. Everybody's like, yeah, fantastic. But in this case, the expectations are so high, budget is so high that they have to do some kind of astronomical uh, mm-hmm. thing just to be acceptable, just to meet the expectation. Yeah, that's way too much pressure. It's, oh my God, yeah. a hell of a lot of pressure. It's not like us. It's not like us uh, shooting over here and yeah. uh, having a time and hitting the button and uh, playing the... Sometimes not even hitting the button. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> skipping the button and, and... Just talking for like an hour. <laughs> whatever the hell's going on over here. Speaking of movies, the, uh, the we had the box for the Netflix. Glass Onion? The Glass Onion, so I watched that. Okay. And I watched The Knives Out because... Oh, right on. Well, yeah. I said to... If I'm going to watch The Glass Onion, sure. I should watch The Knives Out to see with the mystery and stuff and now I'm fully I'm filled in on the whole thing. Okay, great. And it was I'm glad. it was cool because I was curious. They said, "Oh, the box we sent for the mystery video is a lot like the uh, practical yeah, effects. It's, it's tied in there. In yeah. the movie, and so I was very happy to see that in okay, the movie good. itself. I felt very connected. You're like that's the the that's moment. Right. Yeah. That's right. I felt very when connected to it and and uh puzzles and mysteries and stuff. It's 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 kind of it's kind of cool. 
puzzles and mysteries and whatnot. You're yeah. not watching it like how you watch a typical story structure. Uh -huh. You're watching a little different. Like we were pausing at a different moment. So we we're saying, did you see in the corner? Did you? Oh, right, right, we right. were really treating it in that fashion. Mm. So it's a cool thing you can do with the genre. But anyway, yeah, I watched that movie over the holidays. I, I don't think I was alone with that either. I heard Daniel Craig got like 50 million bucks for that. Really? And they got him for another one now. They're going to do a third one. Okay. He's doing 100 million with the detective role. Yeah, he, so. he did a good job. So shout out Daniel Craig. Are do, you gonna watch this? Do your thing. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll do an avatar. I'll give him I'll give him a little piece of the three billion or whatever it is they're looking for. Yeah, you watched it, right? No, no, first I didn't. One? I haven't seen the first one. Oh so my I, god! I, I would have to go and watch that one. And, and Mo would be very depressed. Uh, I go watch that one. Well, it's okay. It's uh, it's all good, Will. Lots of time. I'm on a little, you know, I got a little bit more time right now for like the next week or yeah. whatever. So maybe it's maybe it's gonna happen right now. Who knows? Thank you very much, everybody who joined here today. Thank you very much to uh, uh, Will, as usual, for putting things together. Uh, I hope everybody had a happy holiday. As I said before, hopefully you dug yourself out of some snow if that was an issue for you. Maybe you melted some ice off of a car. I don't know what you had to do, but I'm happy you did it. And uh, I'm happy that you were here with us mm -hmm. for this moment uh, right now. And so, happy new year. Oh, yeah. Happy new year coming up real soon. Okay. Later, guys. Thank you.